So good afternoon, everybody. So my name's Nick Hopper. I'm the technical director for Monodraft. I'm going to talk to you this afternoon about wind assisted ventilation, which is our Monodraft's natural ventilation products and our natural cooling product, which we call Cool Phase. So Monodraft is a, a manufacturer of ventilation equipment based in the UK. Um, we've been going 45 years and we've done thousands of projects across the UK, but also across globally. We take part a lot of our work in design as well as the manufacturer, and we put great emphasis on that because having low energy ventilation products, they haven't the capacity to just increase the performance later on down the line. So we, we really focus on making sure the products are designed to, to suit the building's requirements. And we pride ourselves on being very innovative and we're very active in an R&D function. So our natural ventilation products so this can be traced back, our wind catcher system can be traced back to the Victorian era, whereby chimneys were introduced into buildings to promote the use of stack ventilation. But going back earlier than that point in the Persian uh, uh, peninsula um, and in Persia, our wind catcher systems utilize a wind tower principle, whereby on the uh, windward side of the system, we capture the, the, the air being blown across the roof, turn it through 90 degrees and bring it into the room below. But at the same point, we have the leeward side of the system, which creates a negative pressure drawing air throughout the system. So within one terminal, we can provide an intake and extract function. On the lower section of the system, we have an insulated volume control damper. So that controls the amount of ventilation air through. And if you look through the plan section of our system, you can see an internal quadrant and that means that from a static system, no matter which way the wind is blowing, you always have an intake and an extract function through the system. So this is the uh, this is an enlarged uh, diagram of the, the previous view where you can see the intake and extract function through our system. So we have the positive pressure from the roof on the windward side. We have the negative pressure from the from the leeward side. And then we also have natural buoyancy of the room air wanting to travel out through the system. Over the times with Monodraft, we've done pretty much every different type of application. So we've got square systems, we've got circular types of designs uh, right the way through to oval systems and uh, and then we had sort of historic type buildings where they utilized brick clad um, type arrangements and uh, uh, a selection is shown there on the right hand side. So taking the systems and the, the design of the system forward, uh, we introduced an active louver uh, scenario. This was born about by several different aspects. One, that louvers have a balance between the amount of air that passes through and the amount of weather rejection that the louver is able to sustain. And so therefore, we, we have this motorized modulating arrangement, which actually is two louvers next to each other, and the inner louver can move upwards and the outer louver uh, remains static. And that allows us to control the actual opening area of the louver. So it increases the amount of weather rejection, but it also enables um, the amount of uh, the, the resistance of that louver to be much lower in summertime when we actually want to get as much air through as possible. It also stops uh, sort of light fluffy particles of snow being carried through open louvers. And so therefore we were able to offer a complete no leak guarantee with our systems. Taking that technology further, We've now introduced heat recovery cores within our system. So we're using an aluminium heat exchanger here so that in wintertime ventilation, we can we can provide a mechanical um, heat recovery type solution. But in summertime, we can go back to a purely natural ventilation device. This then encompasses the best of both worlds. You get the um, high performance of mechanical heat recovery in winter. So we have the least amount of heat loss in the space, but in summertime, we have much more higher levels of fresh air being driven into the buildings below. And this utilizes phase change material. Now phase change material, the easiest way of describing this is to use the analogy of, of ice and water. And we know that water freezes at zero degrees and turns into ice. And in that solidification stage, we have a huge amount of uh, thermal energy that is captured. So when you put your ice cube in your drink, it releases that thermal energy and cools the, uh, the liquid around it. 
We do exactly the same scenario with phase change material. However, the chemicals within the phase change material are engin engineered to, to be at the optimum temperature range for buildings. So we have a melting phase between 20 and 24 degrees. And that gives off that latent energy where we're, where we're able to, to capture huge amounts of thermal store. So at nighttime, what we do is we, we blow air over the phase change material, that nighttime capture, and that solidifies the material overnight. So as long as we get temperatures below 18 degrees, we're able to capture thermal energy and store it for the following day. How we utilize the phase change materials, we encapsulate it in an aluminium enclosure, and we have a series of these phase change material panels stored into a, an enclosure, which we call a thermal battery. You can see that there, we have a number of the panels located in the center of the thermal battery. And on either side, we have two chambers, and that allows us to pass fresh air um, through the system without going over the phase change material. This means that we can provide fresh air to the space in the morning when the outside air is fairly cool and only utilize the phase change material exactly when we need to during the sort of midday section of the day. The phase change material we use is non-flammable and is also tested to uh, a RAL German standard of 10,000 cycles. So if you look at the phase change material system itself, this is our cool phase product. There's a central air handling unit mounted in the middle of the system, and that forces air through the, uh, the phase change material, and we pass it over the thermal batteries on either side of that, uh, that air handling unit. We also have a recirculation module, so exactly like an air conditioning system, we can return room air and pass it over the phase change material. For instance, if the external conditions are very hot, um, but generally speaking, we mix that with fresh air so that we are providing fresh air and good air quality to the room space. So the performance of our cool phase system isn't just the phase change material storage that we have, it's the sum total of the free cooling that we're able to provide in the morning and evening sections of the day, it's the nighttime cooling of us flushing the building overnight, as well as charging the phase change material, and then of the, th of the thermal battery capacity that we provide. And we include that within our modeling that I spoke about earlier, our design uh, simulations that we conduct. So the dynamic simulations that we conduct are using a, a, a dynamic simulation tool called IES, and the graph on the left-hand side, or the diagram on the left-hand side, right at that center, is the phase change material component that we worked with IES to implement within their dynamic simulation tool. And this dynamic simulation tool is, is uh, available to anyone to test um, that uses IES. You can drag our systems directly into a 3D building and you can model the effects of the phase change material and of the energy use of our system. So it's a really good way of comparing uh, mechanical cooling, natural cooling through to ventilation, natural ventilation. And um, it provides a, a full analysis on the year round temperatures uh, that can be delivered within that space. So this is a fairly old case study, but it's a, a university that um, installed and it's a full year's worth of data. And the power consumption of our systems um, after that whole year uh, was uh, 25 pence per week. And uh, the maximum temperatures in that space um, never exceeded 28 degrees C and we kept the CO2 levels below 1,000 parts per million average. Oh yeah, and some installation examples of our systems. Now, I've, on the previous slides, I've shown um, the, the sort of cladded and the fascia version of our system. However, 80% of what we supply is fitted above a suspended ceiling. So it's a very boring fit, and uh, but effectively all the clients end up seeing from our systems is a four-way diffuser uh, mounted in their suspended ceiling. And that's one of the, the, the aspects that we have to, to negotiate with clients is that, that we're not supplying air conditioning and the performance of our system is slightly different. We have slightly higher temperatures and, um, and the, the knock-on effect of that is, is an improved air quality and a reduction in power consumption. So within our control systems that we supply, we, we have very visual indicators to the users of rooms that there are the net benefits of, of our systems over air conditioning. 
Um, on the left hand side, some architects have actually stripped apart some of these, these suspended ceilings and have actually made um, uh, an example and, and, and exposed services of our systems. So they've become quite visual. And um, that's another way that of conveying through to the end users of the equipment they have in their space. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much for your attention. And I believe I'm introducing Peter Foldberg from Velux. <laughs>